Well, I'm back. Uh, I'm going to do a little short video. I'm going to start a new project. I'll get back to the dealing with the other radio and, and continuing with uh, dealing with troubleshooting, uh, although that radio will be pretty much operational, but we'll go through uh, more stuff about uh, different methods and the methodolo methodology I can speak of uh, measuring voltages and where to start, where to end, and and the logic of, of troubleshooting. But in the meantime, I got to wait for a tube that's on back order for it before I uh, do anything with it. So I thought I would start on this, and uh, yeah, we'll just kind of keep you informed as I move through this radio. This will be a complete tear down. It's got a lot of rubber wiring in it, covered wiring in it that's going bad, that typical rubber. Um, I think I'll replace this resistor. What do you guys think? I hate them little sand resistors. They just kind of fall apart. Um, I already pulled the transformer. It had um, a switch mechanism in it, which was rather interesting. They had uh, bothered to for some reason, at one point in time, soldered this one in the on position, which is actually the you turn you push that one in, you have rigor radio. When it's out, then you got the push button mechanism. So I don't know why they did. They uh, cleaned it up a little bit. I'm gonna further clean it, but I lubed it up right now to get it to operational. So it's working a little better. Tuning condenser needs uh, a little cleaning. Not too bad though. I've had a lot worse. Uh, the numbers on the back here is so that you can not have to worry about the dial when you're doing your alignment. Uh, when this is in place there will be a, a pointer or something in the instructions to tell you exactly where what kind of pointer or how to set up one so that you can follow this little chart, chart instead of following uh, looking around looking at the uh, dial being that the main part of the dial or at least the number parts inside the cabinet and a lot of the adjustments for this is a lot easier if it's outside the cabinet uh, the radio, I'm going to pull the IFs. Obviously, it's going to need some serious attention to the chassis. We'll just probably paint it, clean it up, and then paint it. Uh, so, I want to get the IFs off, restuff this, filter cap, and uh, get it all cleaned up. Now, amazingly, the rubber for the tuning condenser is extremely soft and spongy, so that's the first for me. Usually they're rock hard. It's uh, built around 1939, 1940, RC96T7. Been taking some pictures. This is what she kind of looked like uh, before I got started. Uh, got uh, schematics wiring diagram for it pulled out the band switch there's a lot of as you can see a lot of bad rubber wire on there uh, some of this has got cloth on it but really all that is is a cloth covering over rubber it's the same rubber so I'll be replacing all of it there's no use to even mess with it uh, parts are in here, antenna coil and other parts. Uh, check the tubes out. There's a six, it's a six tube radio. Push button, automatic, as well as um, I can hook up a funnel to it. Although that funnel plug looks kind of funny. And uh, I'll get her stripped down and get the chassis kind of pretty well cleaned up ready for paint and I'll show you doing our video on it 
then we'll just kind of work our way through it uh, getting her back up and running and see what it does and see how well it works um, yeah who knows it may become a troubleshooting radio you never know these parts there there were some interesting uh, things done in here they added uh, a 20 microfarad cap as a repair the only thing they did was what I didn't like was they just went ahead they never disconnected the original they just bridged across it uh, two little points about that if this still has capacitance in it anytime you put capacitance in parallel they add up so if this was still somewhat functional you'd be adding capacitance but the other thing is too and despite maybe some people on the internet that don't believe so uh, I don't have any video or anything of it but in my years experience I have ran across where these have shorted electrolytics will short, paper caps will short, mica caps will short any capacitor can short so anytime someone makes a repair like that and just bridges the original cap you're asking for trouble uh, these things you know they don't heal themselves they just get worse as time goes on it most likely was leaky it would have continued to get worse this would have gotten where the replacement cap wouldn't have been doing nothing everything would have went there electricity finds the easiest path so uh, I don't know what else to say on that. We'll uh, take a look inside the cans, check all the coils. Now I've checked out uh, most of the coils and the transformer. I haven't checked the IFs yet. Everything else seems to check good. The cabinet, I haven't brought it in yet. I'll have to make a video of it. It needs a little attention, mainly mostly gluing and, and uh, uh, good cleaning but otherwise the finish is not too bad on it's got some scars here and there but I don't mind that too much uh, after all the radio is over 70 years old so it's bound to have a few war scars and uh, so anyway in the next video I'll show you the cabinet hopefully I've got this thing stripped down and getting uh, started on the cleaning of it and we'll make another video of that and we'll see where we're at on this uh, switch here it is seemingly working so hopefully it'll be fine I've had a lot of troubles with these unless you get them really 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 clean sometimes they can give you some troubles and they can be a pain in the neck to get them to function properly that's probably why they soldered this one just let the radio go it's a AM and I think um, I think there's two shortwave bands so clean the knobs up they're nice little knobs so anyway that's where we're at uh, we'll paint the transformer up nicely and see how she does uh, thanks for your comments your support really appreciate it uh, I've been answering trying to answer some uh, I find it sometimes easier to answer comments <laughs> on a video oh one other thing I wanted to a uh, couple little things I ran across this stuff and it seems to oh that's the wrong one seems to work pretty good um, this is a white lithium grease spray now it's not as thick as if what if you just got the regular grease in a pail naturally it's got to be able to spray out this is CRC white lithium grease I paid under three bucks for it, like 297 or something like that at Walmart uh, the first time I ran across this stuff I seen WD-40 had it at Menards it was in a yellow can and it was white lithium grease. Now I don't know how well theirs is or how the two compare uh, but 
theirs was more than twice the price. Um, so I like CRC. I've used a lot of their electronics cleaner and it works really good. So I've gave them this a uh, little bit of a try. Uh, it got this thing to operate really good. It, it'll leave a little bit of residue, which is the grease that you see there, the white. Uh, yeah, if you get out to Walmart, give it a try. It, a little bit easier to lube up the bearings and tuning condensers and uh, and other things instead of trying to use a toothpick to get lithium grease in there. Uh, I think that's about it. So we'll call this the uh, RCA radio something or another part one. I'll figure it out. And uh, thanks again for watching and for your comments. I will get back to you. Till next time.